This podcast is part of the C-Suite Radio Network, turning the volume up on business. Welcome to the Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer. Join us as Deb talks with her guests, experts in their fields, as they share real-life stories and techniques to power up your business. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And today, we're actually going to be talking about something that is near and dear to my heart and something that I think every single business professional needs to be fairly proficient in. And for many people, it strikes total absolute knee quaking fear and that's public speaking so please join me in welcoming gary rogers to our program today thank you very much it's great to be here deb great well gary let me tell people a little bit about you so gary rogers has spent a lifetime learning teaching coaching and directing people all over the world on how to overcome the greatest single fear that most people face public speaking. Gary spent 35 years in the television production motion picture industry. He started his own television production company in the early 1980s, producing TV commercials, infomercials, and corporate videos for many of the world's largest corporations. Gary is a master teacher and director. He has directed thousands of people in addition to many Hollywood stars, including Academy Award-winning actor Charlton Heston. Gary claims that if he can direct Moses, he should be able to direct you in public speaking skills. So again, Gary, welcome. Well, thank you. You read that just like I wrote it. I know. Isn't that amazing? And, you know, that is actually one of the things that, that as public speakers we need to do, and that's be prepared, <laughs> right? Absolutely. So, you know, I, I love that you know, we talk about public speaking and say how many people fear it. And it truly is one of those that we fear public speaking more than we are afraid to die. <laughs> yeah. Death is number seven on right. the book of lists rates the fear of public speaking, the number one human fear of all people all over the world. Right. Uh, and death is number seven. I know. So Most people. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, nope, no. Nope. Uh, most people would rather be in a coffin at a funeral uh, than giving the eulogy. Uh, Jerry Fe Seinfeld, one of his great lines, uh, and it's true. Uh, mm -hmm. People are deathly afraid right. of speaking in front of other people. Right. So, Gary, why do you think that is? Well, there are a lot of reasons, I think. Uh, number one, uh, people know that when they speak, when I'm speaking right now, mm -hmm. uh, you're looking at me and possibly thousands of your other guests. I know mm -hmm. that. Uh, and people don't want to be judged. They're frightened right. of being judged. And mm -hmm. every time they open their mouth, people are looking at them and listening to them. They're frightened of being judged. Mm -hmm. uh, people want to look good. They want to appear good. They want to sound good. They don't want to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think one of the biggest reasons is people aren't adequately trained okay. to be proper public speakers. It just makes my blood boil. It's one of my biggest uh, uh, pet peeves. Mm -hmm. uh, in high school, uh, uh, speech, public right. speaking, is not a required subject no. in most schools, mm -hmm. even in college. Mm -hmm. In my state, I live in the greater Salt Lake City area in mm -hmm. the state of Utah. You can become a teacher without having to take public speaking. Wow. It's not a required skill. Mm -hmm. That's almost criminal. Mm -hmm. uh, people go throughout their entire lives without proper training, mm -hmm. and it is the number one fear that most people have. Uh, I think because of lack of training, because of a, a lack of awareness, and certainly because of the fear, people know that they're being judged right. whenever they open their mouth. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people just sit in a corner and not put themselves forward. And it's sad because mm -hmm. people miss so many great opportunities uh, without speaking up. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, you know, I mentioned that I think that every person needs to have public speaking skills. Um, you know, and, and what do you think about that and, and, and why? Well, uh, Warren Buffett, one of the world's greatest, richest men, mm -hmm. 
And uh, most people think he's the greatest uh, investor in the entire world. Mm -hmm. uh, when he was uh, finishing high school and entering college, he was so frightened about speaking in public, he would literally throw up. Oh. He would literally mm -hmm. throw up. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go to YouTube right now mm -hmm. and find a, a, a YouTube video of Warren Buffett saying that exact thing. Mm -hmm. He would throw up in just thinking about speaking in front of other people. Uh, what did he do? He confronted his fears. He took a public speaking skills mm -hmm. course, and he said it literally changed his life. Right. In fact, he went to the University of Omaha and asked them if he could, if he could teach classes. Wow. He got so excited about teaching something mm -hmm. that would cause him to throw up until he had proper mm -hmm. training. And now he loves to get in front of other people. Right. Uh, it, it, it makes all the difference in the world. People, strange things happen when they get in front of other people. Uh, Jimmy Carter in your state, mm -hmm. uh, in the state of Georgia, in 1968, he was invited as a new governor to uh, introduce the then nominee uh, for the president of the United States, it was Hubert H. Humphrey. Mm -hmm. That was a big deal for Jimmy right. Carter. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he wanted to do a great job. Do you mm -hmm. think he was nervous? I think he was. Mm -hmm. He got up in front of the, the convention floor and in front of millions of people on television uh, to introduce. He said, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce the next president of the United States, Hubert Horatio Hornblower. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> it wasn't Hubert Horatio Hornblower, Hubert Horatio Humphrey, Hubert H. Humphrey, in front of millions of people. Right. He made a fool of himself, but he went on to become himself the president right. of the United States. Mm -hmm. People are scared to death to make a mistake when they get in front of people. Right. Same thing happened to... Uh, uh, Rick Perry in the in 2012 elections, uh, he was in front of millions of people in the presidential debate, and his one of his big platforms was he was going to eliminate three uh, government entities, mm -hmm. uh, and he, uh, the moderator asked him which ones uh, he was going to eliminate. He said, well, if I'm made president of the United States, I'm going to eliminate the Department of Commerce, and I'm going to eliminate the Department of Education, and I'm going to eliminate the de Oh, I'm no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he couldn't remember mm -hmm. right. the third one that he was going to eliminate. And the moderator said, you can't remember, Governor Perry, uh, uh, what you're going to eliminate? Right. And he said, well, How dumb are you? Exactly. <laughs> and he struggled again. He said, I'm going to eliminate the... Right, because then it got stuck. He did. And, mm -hmm. and he, he made a famous statement. He said, oops. And the <laughs> next day in the headlines in every paper in the United States, the word oops. Right. And that's the end of his presidential career. Right. Potential well, career. And the problem right is now, that happens to everybody. It does. Mm -hmm. It does. And people know that. Mm -hmm. Strange things happen when they get in front of people. They start to sweat. Right. Uh, th th their hands start to shake. Mm -hmm. uh, their heart starts to pound. Uh, their legs will wobble. Uh, and people don't want to put themselves through that. So what do they do? They stay in a corner and mm -hmm. let opportunity just fly by them. And it's so sad. Right. Well, and we talk about public speaking. And many people, when they think about it, they think about crowds of people, yeah. you know, thousands, millions of people. And in many cases, it really is one person. You know, it's going in and asking for that raise. It's speaking up, uh, you know, talking to a potential new client. Um, you know, um, personal things. It's, it's, you know, meeting somebody for a date. All of those various things. And, and instead of going in and mumbling and, you know, and, and all of that, we need to learn how to present ourselves in a way that is confident without being overly confident, cocky, all of those various things. And, and like you said, become successful and get the success that we deserve. 
Well, it, 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 and you talk about some very, very important traits. Uh, uh, speaking, public speaking, and I've got some notes here. Time magazine mm -hmm. uh, stated that 90% of personnel managers in the top 500 companies in the United States of America, uh, they said that they need more public speaking skills. They said it is required to have a successful career. Right. Required to have mm -hmm. a successful career. 60% of people get turned down for a job mm -hmm. because they don't have good communication skills. 60%, right. mm -hmm. the majority of all people get turned down because they don't have good mm -hmm. enough communication skills. 95% of HR professionals say the number one, the number one thing that employers are looking for are good communication skills, mm -hmm. the ability to present well, mm -hmm. to speak well. That's what employers are looking for. And if people want to get, capture the attention of their listeners, their viewers, uh, the people that they're presenting to, they need to learn how to present well, how to speak well. Right. If they do that, it means more money in their mm -hmm. pocket, it means they get promotions, they get raises. A study uh, several years ago uh, by AT&T and Stanford University stated the number one key to success, to success for anybody in any line of work, is the ability to speak well, mm -hmm. to communicate in front of other people. That's not me speaking. That's Time Magazine, right. AT&T, mm -hmm. Stanford University, HR professionals uh, mm -hmm. all over the country are, are telling people you've got to learn how to speak, mm -hmm. but yet it's not a required subject right. in, in high school or mm -hmm. even college. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I remember good. taking it in college, but I don't, I don't believe it was a required class. Yeah, um, you, know, you and, decided and, you wanted to improve and you mm -hmm. took it, uh, but it rarely, even attorneys, attorneys mm -hmm. in most states, uh, and they know they're going to be in front of other people constantly they're, throughout their legal careers. Uh, in most states, attorneys aren't required to take speech mm -hmm. before they go into their law practice. Right. Or they, you know, they're thrown into a situation like a mock trial, yeah. and 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 then it terrifies them. And and of yeah. course, what you you mentioned it kind of alluded to it with Rick Perry. When we've done something and we screw up, then we're just mortally terrified of it. Oh yeah. Um, you know, and and so you know, it, it really is something that is you know, and and we need to continually work on it. You know, people tell me, oh my gosh, you know, you're good at this. No, you know, I have to work at it. And there are times where, you know, I, I, my tongue gets tangled up. You know, I, I did an, another interview earlier today and it was a little bit more complicated name, even though I had it phonetically spelled. No, mm -mm, no, I just, <laughs> and so we, of course we laughed about it, but you know, I could have just said, oh my gosh, I can't do this interview. You know, so Gary, kind of walk us through, you know, if someone is having difficulties and they come to you for training, let's talk about how you're going to work with them. Good point. Uh, I got involved in this business uh, quite by accident. Uh, really, uh, uh, my entire life has been spent in sales, sales marketing management. Mm -hmm. uh, I've owned uh, three of my own companies, but everything I've ever done in life, uh, I've done through my voice. Mm -hmm. uh, getting in front of people and presenting mm -hmm. uh, to people. Uh, uh, you mentioned that I was in television production, motion picture industry for many, many years. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 throughout uh, my entire uh, career, I've been teaching people how to speak. Uh, I started uh, with 3M Company in the early 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, I first started uh, in sales uh, with 3M Company. And then uh, they gave me a job that opened up a whole new career for me. I was eventually made the Western Region Training Manager for 3M wow. Company, mm -hmm. where I trained other salespeople, mm -hmm. and uh, they had me training managers. Mm. They first put me through a course in public speaking, very intensive course, 
And uh, then I was certified as a public speaker mm -hmm. and uh, went out to teach other people uh, proper public speaking skills. Mm -hmm. I absolutely loved it. Opened up a whole new world for me. And mm -hmm. when I went into other areas in my life, when I owned my production company, uh, I had become a public speaker and paid public speaker. I'd go all over the world uh, uh, speaking on the side, still running my companies. I've never left it. Mm -hmm. Well, I sold that business uh, uh, several years ago and really found myself out of work. And I, I didn't, didn't want to stop working. I don't right. think I'll ever stop working. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, didn't really know what to do. And I, mm -hmm. I went back and thought, you know, I love public speaking mm -hmm. so much uh, and technology was such that uh, again this was several years ago that uh, the bandwidth uh, allowed people to get on the internet and mm -hmm. talk to people just like you and I are right. talking right now mm -hmm. with each other I thought my gosh wouldn't it be neat to start a public speaking mm -hmm. uh, course online right uh, I, I've traveled all over the world in my life and I'm so sick of traveling. I di just didn't want to go out and <laughs> do that anymore. But now uh, we, uh, we conduct public speaking uh, courses mm -hmm. online mm -hmm. uh, with up to 12 people in a class. Great. from literally all over the world. Mm -hmm. You can have somebody from Australia, from, uh, I, I had somebody from Romania not too uh, wow. long ago, and Moldova. Uh, we're speaking to each other just mm -hmm. like you and I are speaking with each other. Uh, we're not in person, but we are in person. I can right. see you right now, mm -hmm. I can hear you right now. Mm -hmm. We're looking at each other mm -hmm. and smiling at each other. Uh, and the same thing happens uh, in our classes. Mm -hmm. And these people get to know each other and become lifelong uh, friends. Great. We conduct uh, our courses in two steps. Mm -hmm. The first step, uh, uh, as soon as they place an order, they receive instant access to 30 uh, separate video training modules. Wow up to seven hours mm -hmm. of training mm -hmm. and they go through exercises uh, uh, to perfect uh, their skills that they learn in the video training and then as soon as the video uh, training is over they can take that at their own time mm -hmm. uh, they contact my office and schedule uh, five one-hour sessions mm -hmm. uh, with me in classes Okay. Where we'll spend up to five consecutive days, Monday through Friday, uh, working with them, coaching with them individually, uh, which is still frightening, even though it's done mm -hmm. online. Uh, at the end of each session, we send them a, a video mm -hmm. of that session so they can look at themselves. Great. They can see what they've done right, what they've done wrong. Say, so, oh, I, I didn't know I was doing that. Mm -hmm. Picture's worth a thousand words. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. it's a, we spend five days working with them after they've learned all of the skills. Mm -hmm. Very intensive, very intensive workshop. Uh, uh, and it is so fun to watch people progress. You mm -hmm. can see them. And others can see the other people in the classes. Right. Uh, you know, and, and I love kind of the mutual support um, because... I think that's a big part of it is, is we get so afraid that you know, when and and when we're alone we think oh my gosh I look horrible I sound horrible but when other people are telling you no it's okay yeah. then then we get over that hump you do uh, we had a class last month uh, with a woman uh, when she first contacted me she sent me an email uh, she said uh, I am absolutely petrified of speaking in front of other people. She said, I've been that way all my life and I have lost many opportunities, oh. wonderful opportunities. She said, I know I've got to do something about it. I'm just absolutely petrified. Mm -hmm. uh, and just such a sweet person. Mm -hmm. And she told everybody in, in the class that she was in. Mm -hmm. And people had empathy and sympathy right. for her. And it, it, she just did a magnificent job. Mm -hmm. It's hard to believe that she was so frightened and other people told her, I can't believe that you're scared to death that you come across so well. Right. 
and she left the class with a, a, a just a renewed new sense of her ability to get in front of people. She just did a magnificent job, but people just had so much empathy and love for her. Mm -hmm. you, you could feel it, and, and they were supporting her throughout the entire class. Right. Well, and this really isn't something that we can work on by ourselves. You know, we can to some degree, especially if we have something like what we've got right here with a video camera, um, you know, because you can kind of tape yourself doing something. But you know, if, if there's nobody there, that's very different. Um, you know, it's, it's funny when I do webinars, I don't like doing, you know, webinars are just one of those things that we need to do, but I don't really like it because there's nobody there. I mean, yes. you know, they're, they're there, but you know, you feel like there's crickets and every once in a while, hello, is there anyone out there? And so I have an audience. I have dolls and I have my stuffed animals. It's the funniest thing in the world. And, and that's who I'm talking to. So that way I have something, someone that I'm actually trying to relate to. Yes. It, it, and it makes it so much more enjoyable. Right. I, 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 I have been looking at you for the last two or three days, getting ready for this interview. And I knew this was going to be a fun, fun interview because you are an absolute expert. Oh, well, you, 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 you've got, there are many, many uh, skills to make a great public speaker. And you've got to me, the three most important skills. Oh, and what are those? The three most important skills in my not so humble opinion, projection, mm -hmm. inflection, and enthusiasm. Oh, and no, that's I don't have enthusiasm. That's number one. For me, number one is enthusiasm. You come across, you're so bubbly and so excited, and it, it rubs off on me and I'm sure all of your other guests. Enthusiasm is so critical to a good public speaker, and that's something that anybody can do. Mm -hmm. Projection, very important. Uh, anybody can project. I've had people say, oh, I, I just have a, a small, tiny voice. Just, what are those quiet I can't do it. But they can't, unless there's some physical deformity. Right. Anybody can project. Mm -hmm. And inflection, so mm -hmm. important. To, uh, and it's so easy to do. Mm -hmm. I say easy to do. Uh, you, you, you mentioned earlier, uh, you can't do this by yourself. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you can read a book or you can watch a video mm -hmm. and watch somebody else uh, try to talk about inflection, projection, enthusiasm, and then you do it and, and you do it totally wrong. Somebody's got to be there to help you mm -hmm. and point it out. And right. I mentioned video. Uh, a picture's worth a thousand words. Mm -hmm. When people see themselves on video, it's, whoo. Right. I'm not projecting. I'm not coming across very enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. Seeing is believing. Mm -hmm. uh, th 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 that probably is one of the greatest uh, uh, things that we provide in our courses is mm -hmm. the ability to see themselves mm -hmm. immediately right. after they've, uh, mm -hmm. they they've uh, done an exercise. Mm -hmm. Well, and it does take practice. Um, you know, one of the things that, that I have to watch is that I don't get too enthusiastic <laughs> and, and, and get carried away. You know, because, and part of that is, you know, when I'm talking with a guest where I'm, I'm truly enjoying it, you, you do, you get wrapped up in it, you get excited. And it's funny, when I moved here from Atlanta, I had someone come up to me and, and he said, you know, he'd been listening to my programs. This was when we were just strictly a podcast. And he told me you know, how much he loved him. But he said, darling, y'all need to slow down. And, and so I actually, for a long time, had a note on my computer screen where I could see it when I was doing interviews that said, slow down. You know, and, 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 and I do, I still have to think about that. You know, am I, am I talking too fast? Because, of course, when we talk too fast, especially with women, then our voice goes up in pitch, <laughs> and the dogs are going to start wailing. <laughs> and, but uh, you don't think of that unless you're, as you said, seeing yourself do it. 
Yep, you're absolutely right. Uh, I, you mentioned you've got to practice. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we, we have our, our uh, students uh, go through an exercise uh, uh, demonstrating some of these skills. I'm going I'm to sh show you here in just a moment. Uh, uh, projection, inflection, enthusiasm. Right now I'm projecting. Mm -hmm. If I didn't, I think I would come across boring. In fact, I'm, I'm just going to slow down here, and I'm going to talk to you the way I would normally talk if I weren't on a, a program, mm -hmm. radio program. So like just a conversation voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My conversation voice right now, mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking to you. I, I'm looking at you. You look very, very nice. Uh, you do a marvelous job on the radio. Uh, I'm excited to be on your program. Uh, this is the way I normally talk. And my first thought was, you don't sound excited. I don't sound excited at all. Uh, years and years ago, I did some radio announcing. And I like to use a, a commercial that I did uh, uh, in our classes. It was for Carling Black Label Beer. Let me give you just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Have, Happy holidays ahead, days of hospitality, friendliness, and the welcome refreshment of Carling Black Label Beer. People like light sparkling clear Black Label. Black Label is now America's fifth largest brewer, up from 62nd place in just 10 years. Won't you try a nationally famous Black Label? It's fun to serve, a pleasure to enjoy. Sold everywhere at the friendly local price. Join in the cheerful call. Mabel Black Label. This is KRUD Radio Crud in Salt Lake City. Now, that's the way I would sound if I were on the radio. Mm -hmm. Right. You have a radio voice. Mm -hmm. But I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do the same commercial mm -hmm. in the way I talk. And this is the way I talk. If I weren't projecting on the radio, I would talk like this. Happy holidays. There's nothing wrong with the way I'm talking. Right. Mm -hmm. It, does this sound comfortable to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Happy holidays ahead. Days of hospitality, friendliness, and the welcome refreshment of Carling Black Label beer. People like light sparkling clear Black Label. Black Label is now America's fifth largest brewer, up from 62nd place in just 10 years. Won't you try nationally? That's the way I talk. Is there anything wrong? Uh, but if I gave a, a radio commercial like that, people would turn me off. Mm -hmm. yep. can, you hear, can you hear a difference? Yes, definitely. Happy holidays ahead. Mm -hmm. Days of hospitality, friendliness, and the welcome. Instead of happy holidays ahead, days mm -hmm. of hospitality, there's no inflection. Right. There's no projection. Mm -hmm. There's really no enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. I'm not enthusiastic now. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 people try that in our classes, and uh, they'll see themselves instantly, and other people mm -hmm. see them. You're not projecting. You, you've got to get some enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they apply those skills, and sometimes it takes two or three or mm -hmm. four times, and other people telling them in the class, uh, now take a look at yourself, watch it, and come back and do it again. Mm -hmm. Give us some more projection. Uh, and it can be done by literally anyone. Mm -hmm. These are skills that don't take a college education as long as they know how to proje what projection mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. what inflection is. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, they simply need coaching mm -hmm. uh, and to apply themselves. Right. Well, and I think what some people think is, you know, that seems uncomfortable and awkward. And, and it is when you it first is. start doing it. And, and it is a little extra, you know, more than what you would normally do. And so for people that just doesn't feel comfortable. And, you know, I'll be honest, it's, it is, it's not always comfortable for me to be sitting here talking. I mean, this is, it seems weird. I still seem like I'm just talking to myself, even though I can see you. And, you know, and every once in a while, my cat will wander in and look at me like, what are you doing? Um, but it, it, it is, you know, it's, it's, it is uncomfortable and it's awkward because it's not what we're used to doing. And th that's why you ask a question at the very beginning, why are people so frightened? 
because it is not comfortable for them. They can see other great speakers. Uh, they see them every day on television. They listen to them on the radio. And they just have never been trained themselves, and they don't want to put themselves out there. Right. And they miss such great opportunities mm -hmm. because of it. Right. It is so sad. It just makes my blood boil that our school system, they, they've seen these figures. Mm -hmm. The number one key to anybody's success is the ability to speak well, mm -hmm. to present well. Mm -hmm. HR professionals, time, they know that, but yet they don't teach it mm -hmm. in school. Right. It just makes my blood boil. Well, and you know, one of the things we've been talking about is the ability to, to get through a job interview. Um, you know, and, and, and that is, you know, just a job interview in general is not fun. No. You know, anybody who says they like going on interviews, you know, I'm like, really, what's wrong with you? Um, because, you know, you're, you're asked questions that you, you try to anticipate. I mean, you know, that's, that's part of the, the preparation. But it's, it's very hard to talk about ourselves and to do it in a way where we're not sounding like, ho, 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 look at me. Yeah, exactly. Kind of thing. You know, and, and it's, it, when I was in Colorado, I taught uh, some courses at Metro State University some business courses and one of the things that we had to do were mock interviews and so we broke you know i broke my class down into to teams of three now it was an interesting program because we had people in there who were 18 and people who were in their 60s so you know we tried to really mix things up a lot and and you know it wasn't that you got to be with your friend no you had to you know we had to, to break things up and so there was a, a young woman who was studying public relations so I thought this was was kind of ironic she partnered with two guys and so you know they're they're doing the mock interview and then the whole thing was I would come in as the senior executive and interrupt you know and, and kind of do things and 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 they practiced and they practiced and, and they they got a grade from each other based on did they practice did they help each other you know all those various things and so this young woman was you know doing her interview and she got you know two or three minutes into it and she looked at me, deer in headlights, absolute terror, and she said, I'm going to throw up. What do I do? I, of course, take a step back. <laughs> like, no, danger, danger. And, and so I said, okay, well, let's, let's kind of calm down here for a second. And she had, she had just worked herself up. Even though she was prepared, she felt comfortable in the situation, you know, talking to the, the two guys because she had practiced with them. But it just all of a sudden it hit her there was a classroom of people there so she had practiced she had done all of that but then when there were people there that was what terrified her yep. um you know and 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 she said you know, can i start over and i said unfortunately no because this is a timed exercise and i said so we're just going to go forward and then i had her come to my office afterwards and and i said you know let's kind of talk through this and i suggested to her that she attend toastmasters um, you know, and, and, um, and, and kind of, you know, hopefully get over that, that fear. But, you know, it really was, you know, I, I kind of joked at the start that, you know, being prepared is a big part of it. And it is being prepared really is a huge part of it. But until there's that real audience there, it's, it's not real. Yep. You, you mentioned that, that people clam up and they just did, they, they get so frightened uh, mm -hmm. And you also mentioned that when we're speaking in public, it doesn't mean that we're speaking in front of 2,000 people. Right. You and I, this is public speaking right now. Mm -hmm. yep. There are so many people that are frightened to death mm -hmm. in just talking with other right. people mm -hmm. in an interview. That's very frightening. Mm -hmm. You don't know the person. Uh, I didn't know you. I've never met you before. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw you on screen. And there's always a few butterflies. Uh, right. Uh, am, am I going to be able to get along with this uh, sweet lady? Uh, uh, I knew that you were fun uh, before I came on, but uh, what do I say to her? Mm -hmm. How do I start a conversation uh, if we were just talking with each other? Uh, when uh, I started with 3M Company uh, in the training, uh, in the uh, sales field, my boss uh, taught me uh, six, six of questions that have stayed with me for the rest of my life. The mm -hmm. most powerful questions I've ever learned. And we talk about these in our public speaking skills workshops. How do you carry on a conversation with people? Mm -hmm. the most powerful questions I ever learned, six of them, who, what, when, why, where, and how. That's, they're called, yep, 
That's my PR background right there. <laughs> They're called open-end questions mm -hmm. because they cannot be answered with a simple yes or a simple no. They invite a more detailed response. For Let me give you an example. I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, uh, do you like guests on your program? Yes. Okay. Yes. I get a one-word answer. Mm -hmm. That was a closed-end question. Mm -hmm. Closed-end question, yes or no? Mm -hmm. uh, let me rephrase the question. What kind of guests, Deb, mm. do you want to see on your program? Oh, I love guests that I can talk to my listeners and my viewers about business tips that we all need to learn. Okay, now I get a much more detailed response. Mm -hmm. A long, detailed response when I just rephrase the question. Mm -hmm. I can't say, ask that question, what kind of guests do you want on your program? And you say no. Right. Or yes, that doesn't make any sense. You've got to answer with mm -hmm. a more detailed. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, that really hit me with great impact uh, mm -hmm. when he taught me those six questions. Uh, this was years and years ago before I got married. I had a date for dinner that night, and we talked about that, uh, and he said, Gary, I want you to do me a favor. He said, I, I want you to go through an exercise on your date. It was a first date. He said, where are you going? I said, I'm taking her to dinner. He mm -hmm. said, oh, that's great. He said, at some point uh, in uh, your dinner date, I want you to look at your watch and notice the time and then start talking to her, uh, but you've got to ask a question the question has to start with either who, what, when, why, where, or how, mm -hmm. and listen to her answer, and then ask another question, got to start with one of those mm -hmm. six words, and see how long you can go doing nothing but listening to her responses and asking other open-end mm -hmm. questions. Well, I couldn't say no, this is my boss, uh, right. so I said, okay. So we went to dinner and they brought uh, some rolls out and and I, I had never been with her before. I'd met her at a function and then asked her on a date. And I thought she was really cute and I, I was looking forward to this. Well, I asked her a question. Uh, her name was Linda. I said, Linda, where are you from? And she gave me a good detailed answer. I said, what brought you to California? And another detailed answer and we continued uh, to ask questions, and I listened very carefully to her answers, and after 22 minutes, she looked at me and she said, you know, you are really different. And I said, what do you mean? That's an open-end question. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? And she said, well, most of the guys I go out with uh, uh, don't seem like they're that interested in me. They just want to talk about themselves, mm -hmm. but you, you seem to be very interested in me. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, how do you like it? And she said, I like it. Right. Uh, you, you, uh, she, she was having a lot of fun. She was really enjoying it. Well, I continued the exercise. And finally, after 47 minutes, she looked at me and said, you're weird. <laughs> <laughs> at that point, I was. Uh -huh. But at 22 minutes, she was having a great mm -hmm. time. Right. Then it got a little too much. Mm -hmm. Well, I finally told her what I was doing, and she laughed and thought mm -hmm. it was great. But, you know, people can talk to anybody mm -hmm. if they learn those six questions, who, what, when, why, where, and how, and mm -hmm. then learn to listen to the answers. Uh, Donald Trump is in England today mm -hmm. meeting Queen Elizabeth. And his wife is there meeting Queen Elizabeth, and she's a quiet person. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, she's probably wondering, now, what do I say to the right. queen? Mm -hmm. How do I carry on a she's conversation? The queen. <laughs> yeah, the queen. Of, how do you talk to the queen of England? Well, if you learn those six questions, you mm -hmm. can talk to anybody, right. anywhere. Mm -hmm. And comfortable, and people will think that you're interested in them, especially if you listen to the answers, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to be able to carry on great conversations. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and even in, say, an interview situation, you know, that's, you still need to get your own stuff across, but a, a, interviews to me, a, you know, a job interview really is supposed to be two-way. 
you know, I want to know about the company, the, the culture, all of those various things. And so it's great to be able to ask those questions to, to get some of that information. Well, it's all communication. Mm -hmm. uh, and people are so frightened in these situations, and it's sad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, today, here's one of the biggest problems right. we've got today with young people. Mm -hmm. We text. So many people in my classes now are saying, hey, I got to get my, my teenage daughter, my teenage son into your mm -hmm. class. They need this more than anybody. Right. It seems like today uh, people are not communicating mm -hmm. anymore. They're texting mm -hmm. instead of talking, mm -hmm. and they're just doing everything they can to get like after like after like, mm -hmm. and their communication skills are going down right. the tubes, and it's frightening to me. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I'm just wondering where we're going as a country. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and, you know, as, as a culture worldwide, because I don't think this is, is you know, specific to us. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I've shared with my listeners before, I'm a huge fan of the show, The Big Bang Theory. And I remember there was one episode where Sheldon was worried about Amy. He hadn't heard from her. He had texted her. He checked her Facebook status. He'd looked at Instagram. He had sent her a message. He had sent her an email. And, and she hadn't responded. And Leonard said, did you call her? <laughs> and, and Sheldon went, oh. I mean, and, and it had never occurred to him. And I think that is probably one of the things especially from a business perspective, that we get into that habit. We text, we email, we message, you know, all these various things because we don't want to pick up the phone because it can be a big distraction. It can be a time suck, you know, all of these various things. And, and we don't want to talk to them. I mean, we just don't want to, you know, no. for, for whatever reason. It, it, it's, it's frightening. It scares people just right. to pick up the telephone. Mm -hmm. What are they? What if they ask me a question that I can't answer? Right. Uh, you can do that e much easier mm -hmm. on a text than right. you can on the telephone. Mm -hmm. uh, you can take a minute or two to think up an answer if you're texting. Mm -hmm. You can't do that on the telephone. You've right. got to come up with an answer immediately. Mm -hmm. And it's frightening to people. Mm -hmm. But how in the world do you learn how to communicate to speak with people mm -hmm. if you're not speaking, mm -hmm. if right. you're just texting all the time. Well, and in texts and, and emails and, you know, private messages and, you know, all of those various things, of course, we lose the context. You know, we can put the little emojis and we can put LOL and all those various things, yeah. but we still don't know, okay, were they laughing? You know, did they think it was funny? Were they serious? You know, uh, you know, we've all seen those things where somebody thought they were serious and the other person thought they were joking and, you know, all of these various things. And we, we don't get that 100% of the time when we're, you know, when we're on the phone. When we see, like we're doing here with you and I, we do tend to get more context, but we still, you know, we, we, we don't get it all the time. But, you know, I think that's one of the biggest problems that I see in business is we lose that context. You know, we, we just simply don't know, were they funny? Were they serious? You know, all of those various things. Well, you are an absolute master at communicating. I mentioned earlier, you've got the three biggest ones in my estimation, projection, inflection, and enthusiasm, but all the other skills mm -hmm. for a good communicator, a good uh, speaker, mm -hmm. you've got them. Where did you learn these skills? You know, I, it, it's funny, I, part of it is I, I used to sing, you know, not professionally, but in college and, and, and in high school. And, you know, you talk about projection. I had, um, you know, this was long before we had technology and, or, you know, the technology that they have now with headpieces and, and things like that. So yeah. we had to be able to project our voice so that the people in the back could hear us. Um, you know, all of those various things. And, but it was really funny because I, you know, for, for years when I was, was performing, I mean, you talk about stage, right? I wore glasses, you know, it's, it's just been recently that I've had to wear glasses again. And, you know, so I, I wore glasses and of course when you're performing because of the lights and things, you usually do not perform with your glasses. So I would take my glasses off and poof, the audience went away. I couldn't see them. <laughs> you no, know, they weren't there. Well, then I got contacts and oh my gosh. First time I walked on stage and could see people, totally forgot where I was, what I was doing. I mean, just, whoop, you know, everything was gone. But, but it, it, it has taken practice. Um, you know, I did, I took a, 
a speaking class in college. And, but I've never, you know, I, I, and I've never been afraid to speak. Now, do I still get butterflies? Sure. I mean, you know, and, and I think that's part of what does make us good speakers is when we still kind of have that little butterfly, what's going to go wrong type of thing. And things have gone wrong. I mean, you know, I was giving a presentation on LinkedIn, on LinkedIn one time. I mean, how, you know, and I got heckled. It was the weirdest thing in the world. I got heckled. I've had people fall asleep, you know, <laughs> they, you know, all these various things. And, and so it, it takes practice, but a big part of it is just knowing, you know, being prepared, as I said, you know, I've got my slides, I've got my material. I'm, you know, I was always taught that you needed to, you know, have your backups. So, you know, I, I never rely 100% on having a, a, you know, a PowerPoint presentation. What happens if you don't have power? What happens if the yeah. computer dies? Can you still give your presentation? Um, all of these various things. But, um, you know, it, it, it is really just, I've, I've worked with some really great people who have done things like film me. You know, I never realized that I move as much as I move until I was videotaped. And then I was like, and so then of course I was terrified and I'm, you know, trying to be, you know, not move at all. Well, that was, you know, that was not going to work either. But, um, you know, it's simple things like my chair. I mean, my chair moves and does it right? Oh, it does rock. But, you know, knowing sit still. So I, you know, I plant my feet. I don't, you know, I, I don't cross my legs. I have both feet on the ground. Um, you know, things like that. But a big part is, is eye contact and, you know, things like that, uh, which is, is scary and, and hard because that that's, can be very threatening. Well, it can. And then today we've got FaceTime, and I, I dare say that the day will come uh, when most people will be on uh, the telephone when they mm -hmm. talk and they'll be looking right. at, at each mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. In fact, right now we're looking at each other and I right. try looking straight at the camera. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at you. Mm -hmm. uh, if I were to look over here on the screen, mm -hmm. uh, you don't feel very connected to me right, uh, mm -hmm. uh, right now. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of people are listening to this on podcast and they don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm looking off the screen right. and poor Deb, mm -hmm. well, where's Gary? Hey, Gary, I'm uh, over here. Mm -hmm. uh, just looking at somebody straight in the right. eye mm -hmm. is so important mm -hmm. when you're presenting or yeah. speaking right. uh, y y you're talking to them and they feel mm -hmm. connected mm -hmm. to you and so many people just don't do that no. you know and i've never done the the silly thing with re you know think of the audience in their underwear because to me yeah. that's i think you you know and and yeah. um but i do find specific people that I speak to that, you know, tend to look and smile, look engaged. You know, I'm not going to talk to the top of somebody's head if they're, you know, doing this. And yeah. so, you know, and, and, but I pick various people, you know, and so that I'm not just talking to, to those people and, you know, and, and especially if it's maybe an uncomfortable subject, you know, I will try and, and vary and, and look around, which is sometimes hard because not everybody gets engaged. And then, then of course, the problem is if I see somebody who's really not paying attention, then I get fixated on it. What's the matter with you? Why aren't you, what, what's wrong with you? Um, you know, and, and I have been, now, you know, I've, I've like I said, I've, I've taught classes and, and um, both as seminars and then and in a, an academic setting. I have been known to call people out. I mean, you know, just like we it happened to us when we were in school. Excuse me, excuse me, is there something you want to share with the class? <laughs> that type of thing. Um, but yeah, it's it, more than anything, it's practice. It really does take practice. But there are times where it's just not a good day for whatever reason. Um, you know, I've gone to networking events before where I know virtually everybody in the room. It's networking that I've attended many times and I go stand in the corner. I'm just, I'm not, it's just a mood that I'm in. I'm not wanting to engage. And so I know it's better to do that than to try and force it. Well, and you mentioned that something can go wrong. Mm -hmm. And people shy away from these kind mm -hmm. of situations right. because what if I go blank? What if mm -hmm. I forget like Rick Perry or mm -hmm. crazy oh, Jimmy I, I never remember somebody's name. I'm always bad about that. I mean, the worst possible thing that can happen, you make a mistake. Right. Uh, yeah. so, things go on. And you know what? You laugh about it. And that's, that's kind of the, the key is to think, oh, my gosh. And to tell people, you know, I cannot remember that word. 
you know, that name, that whatever. And, and so then you turn into you there, you know, you, what, what is it? Do you know? <laughs> and things like that. And, and I think maybe it's that we all need to remember we're human. I mean, you know, you, you mentioned having empathy and that's the key is when, you know, when we're presenting and we get a little fumbled, we get some butterflies, we get whatever we remember, you know what, they have butterflies too. So let's poke fun at it and then go on. Yep. Absolutely. So tell us, Gary, what are some, some things that you know, you know, we've, we've, you know, you've talked about me, how nice, um, but what are, what are some traits really that public speakers absolutely positively must work on and have? Well, the, the three big ones I already mentioned, projection, inflection, enthusiasm, mm -hmm. uh, eye contact, we've already talked about that, mm -hmm. so important. And uh, one real big one, telling stories. Ah. Telling stories. Mm -hmm. People love to hear stories. You've been telling me stories mm -hmm. throughout this hour. I've been telling you stories to try to emphasize my points. Uh, the greatest uh, storyteller in the world, uh, uh, Jesus in the, in the Bible. Right. That's told, all he did was tell stories. Exactly. Mm -hmm. He told, uh, he called them parables, mm -hmm. uh, examples, using stories uh, to get his points across. Mm -hmm. And that is so important, so important to tell stories in your speeches, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to construct your speeches in a logical manner so that it flows, mm -hmm. to have a strong ending, to even a stronger uh, or beginning, even a stronger ending. Mm -hmm. So important. Mm -hmm. uh, how, where do I start? What do I say? Uh, uh, how to construct a speech. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, those are some of the big skills uh, we, we could go on for literally another mm -hmm. hour just talking about the skills themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, th there are really a half a dozen big ones. Mm -hmm. Action, inflection, enthusiasm, telling stories, eye contact, proper gestures. Right now I'm using a gesture. Mm -hmm. What does this mean? <laughs> right. uh, I, I can get more animated, more projection, more inflection when I use gestures. Mm -hmm. Even when I'm doing uh, voiceovers, uh, uh, I will uh, I will use uh, gestures right. myself mm -hmm. in in the voiceover. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, those are skills that anybody can learn mm -hmm. and master if they practice and uh, they're aware of those skills. Mm -hmm. That's what we try to teach them in our workshops. We work with them. Uh, when they make a mistake, we point it out mm -hmm. as nicely as we can. Mm -hmm. And they'll see the mistakes on video. Uh, again, a picture is worth a thousand words. Mm -hmm. uh, little babies learn uh, by trying, and then their mothers or their fathers uh, or brothers or sisters will correct them. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's not right. This right. is the way you say it. Mm -hmm. That's the way you learn, and that's mm -hmm. the way you learn to speak mm -hmm. and present in front of other people. And again, my biggest pet peeve is it's not taught to mm -hmm. us in a formal manner. Right. Well, Gary, you know, I know that we still probably have people who are thinking, I can't do it. I just can't do it. No, I cannot do it. So what do you tell those people? They can do it. We had a girl, well, it's the same one uh, that I mentioned that was petrified. Mm -hmm. A month ago, we had a, a session. She was just absolutely petrified, mm -hmm. scared to death to take that class. Uh, in our course, we show a video, it's actually up on YouTube, of a, a college senior or college freshman uh, making a presentation in front of other people. It was videotaped, and she is absolutely pathetic. Mm. Your heart goes out to her. Mm -hmm. She breaks every rule. Oh. Every, every skill mm -hmm. that a public speaker needs, she breaks. Mm -hmm. uh, and this girl mentioned, I wrote it down, uh, she said, not everyone has the ability to do what she needs to do. Mm -hmm. And she's one of them. And the class, we took exception. We went around the room and we went through all of the skills mm -hmm. necessary for a good public speaker. Does she have the ability to, to uh, have good eye contact. They all agreed, yes, mm -hmm. she does. How about projecting, inflection? Mm -hmm. Every ability she had, this girl thought, well, she doesn't, but she needs to, to learn those mm -hmm. skills and then to force 
to, to apply those mm -hmm. skills. And certainly all of us have the ability to do that. It's uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but if people are willing to learn and like Warren Buffett, one of the world's greatest individuals, mm -hmm. he would throw up just yeah. thinking about it. Yeah, I think Barbara now, Streisand says that she throws up before she performs. That'd be great, mm -hmm. great example. Mm -hmm. uh, but she does it and she's one of the world's mm -hmm. greatest entertainers. Yep. Oh, yeah. Even though it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that's the, the key is, you know, you're probably not going to die. I mean, you know, ultimately, come now, you know, you, you could, I suppose, give yourself an anxiety attack and, and things like that. But, you know, the, the worst that could happen is maybe you embarrass yourself. Maybe you don't get the job. Maybe you do whatever. But think about what the best is that can come out of it exactly. you know, and, and just go from there. And what I love, Gary, is that you talk about your, your classes and your, your training, and they're done in a non-threatening way. And I think you know, we kind of mentioned the fact that a lot of people have a bad experience, and so then they don't ever want to do it again. And so you know, I love the fact that in your classes, it really is non-threatening. And then when they have to go out and do it for real, it's not nearly as terrifying. Now, we have a, an enormous amount of fun in our classes, mm -hmm. and I'll make a special offer to your listeners. Oh, great. If, uh, I'll make them an incredible deal, and I think we'll leave a link. Uh, you'll mm -hmm. leave a yep. link uh, there where they can go and see what that deal is. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, they got to go to your program to <laughs> check yep. it out. But We'll have it in the show notes. Mm -hmm. I want to work with as many of your listeners as I possibly can, and I'm going to give them a deal. Hopefully, they can't refuse. And to answer your question, anybody, anybody can learn to do these things. Mm -hmm. If they'll spend the time and do their job, I can work with anybody and mm -hmm. help them become a great public speaker. Perfect. I love it. You know, and, and again, it's for any situation. You know, talking with another person, one other person is public speaking. You know, you might not ever need to talk to 10,000 people, but, you know, if you can't go in and ask somebody for a date, ask somebody for a raise, ask somebody to become your client and give you money, then you know, you're not going to be successful. So Gary, tell people how they find you and connect with you online. Well, you can go to companyflix.com, C-O-M-P-A-N-Y-F-L-I-X.com mm -hmm. uh, to our website. Uh, and th th there are a lot of different links they can go to once they get there, but uh, I look forward to talking to anybody. Perfect, I love it. Well, what final thoughts would you like to leave everyone with today? Well, any, anybody, anybody can learn these skills. Uh, the biggest, the greatest promotional sales tool that anybody has is their own voice. Mm -hmm. If they learn how to use it, they can speak up for success and they will have success. Right. I love that. Speak up for success. That's, that, is, that should be your tagline. That's not your tagline. That should be your tagline. <laughs> well, you're a master at it. Thank you so much. Uh, you've just been such a pleasure to work with. I love working with you. Well, then that just means we have to do it again. And so love to have you on again, especially because, as we said, public speaking is the number one fear. And, you know, and, and, and it's not something that people can just get over. You know, I love it. Oh, just get over it. No. You know, it's <laughs> going to take practice. It's going to take knowing what, what the issues are, all those various things. So I would love to have you on again as a guest. Thank you, Deb. Great. Well, you know, I am Deb Creer. I've been having an absolutely wonderful time talking with Gary Rogers. And until next time, everyone have a great day. Thanks for listening to the Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer. Join us next time for more real-life stories and techniques to power up your business. You've been listening to C-Suite Radio. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.